the speed of light is always the same in a vacuum. It's always going to be 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. But what if light goes through a material that's either translucent or transparent? It's going to go through the material traveling at a much slower speed. Its speed is going to be less than 3 times 10 to the power of 8. So when light goes through a material, it's going to change speed. And in certain cases, it's going to change its direction as well. If both speed and direction change in a wave, we say that it's undergone refraction. In your GCSE exam, you are expected to know how to draw ray diagrams for refraction. There are three rules that you need to follow and keep in your mind when you draw these diagrams. If the speed of the wave increases as it goes through the material, the wave is going to refract or bend away from the normal. I'm going to explain what a normal is in a moment. Now that we have the first rule, we can probably predict what's going to happen if the wave decreases in speed. When it decreases in speed, it will bend towards the normal. And finally, if the incidence ray is parallel to the normal, there is going to be no refraction at all. Let's remind us what a normal is. I'm going to draw an air glass interface, which means that my piece of glass is simply sitting uh, beneath some air. The normal is going to be a line that is perpendicular to the surface of the glass. I like to draw mine as a dotted line, but it's up to you. And also, I like to draw it through my material because I find it helpful when it comes to drawing a refracted ray. Next up, I'm going to show you two ray diagrams. They are going to represent two different situations of refraction. Again, I'm going to draw an air glass interface. In most GCSE exam questions, they are going to give you the incidence ray and ask you to draw a refracted ray. They are very likely to award a mark for you to simply draw a normal and then label it. So that's the first thing that I'm doing. I know that light is going to travel faster in air because glass is more dense. So according to our second rule, the refractive ray is going to bend towards the normal. What I'm doing here is in pencil, I'm going to draw a line representing the path of the incident ray as if it's not going to refract at all. My refractive ray is going to be closer to the normal. So I know that my refracted ray must be drawn in between the dot line and the pencil line. This is my refracted ray.
In the next example, I am going to draw a water air interface. This means that my incident ray is going to travel through water first before it enters the air. Water is more dense, so my light ray is going to speed up when it enters air. According to my first rule, it's going to bend away from normal. Again, I am going to draw in pencil the path that the ray is going to take as if it's not going to refract. My refracted ray will have to be somewhere between the pencil line and the horizontal line, which is my uh, surface. I highly recommend this method of uh, drawing refracted ray in ray diagrams. It might take a little bit longer um, drawing in pencil and then erasing it, but it guarantees that you get the direction, bending towards, bending away, correct. I have a block of glass. My ray of light is going to enter from air into the glass and out into the air again. So you see how when it comes out into the air, the ray of light is parallel to the incident ray because it's traveling through the same medium. What if my incident ray is parallel to the normal? It's not going to refract, remember rule number three. A semicircular piece of glass is quite unique because your incident ray is always going to be 90 degrees to the surface or parallel to the normal, which means that as it enters the glass, it is not going to refract. However, as it comes out the other side into the air, it is going to refract. So these three diagrams show us that if and only if the incident ray is not parallel to the normal, there is going to be refraction. 